Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, authorities are investigating what led to one person being killed in Leon Valley. We have the latest from police just ahead here on GMSA. Police are searching for a man who stabbed someone along the river walk, and now a woman is in the hospital with injuries. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 77 degrees to start your Sunday morning. We just saw Alicia Brer out there. We saw the wind is out. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday, September 27th. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday morning with Man, it is breezy out there. It didn't feel really cold, but I was like, should I wear a jacket? I don't know. Is it breezy? Is it cold? I didn't know what to do. I'm not going to lie. I think that's our dilemma. We are always <laughs> wanting to wear jackets, even when it's like 80 degrees outside. That's you and I. Yeah. Question, mm -hmm. did you guys go outside at all yesterday? Yeah, I did. What'd you do? Well, I just went for a little walk, but it was interesting because yesterday we had clouds all morning long and then right as noon hit, we started to see some sunshine. And I think today is going to be very similar as well. Uh, we're going to have morning clouds here and afternoon sun, and it's going to be a toasty day right now outside. As we were mentioning, it is a little windy out there. We are seeing winds uh, gusting up to about 20 miles per hour outside. So we're going to continue with those winds today from the south at 10 to 20 gusts up to 25 miles per hour, staying cloudy through the morning hours, then gradually clearing in a hot day this Sunday. 93 degrees for the high temperature, potentially out toward Del Rio Eagle Pass west of San Antonio. High temperatures could be into the triple digits. So it's going to be hot today. That's the main weather headline for the day today. But we are expecting a temperature drop tomorrow. A cold front is going to be moving in overnight tonight to early tomorrow morning, and that'll make for a very, very windy Monday. Wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour tomorrow. So it is going to be very windy. I'll be back to tell you how windy it'll be in your neighborhood, and we'll talk about that temperature drop, specifically how cool it'll feel in the mornings. Max? Thank you, Sarah. In Leon Valley this morning, an ongoing investigation surrounding a deadly crash. Authorities called out to the parking lot of a Wells Fargo in the 5400 block of Wurzbach Road. That's near Loop 410. Alicia Barrera joining us live downtown with the latest from Leon Valley Police. Alicia? Good morning. Well, we know that this deadly accident involves one driver, one female driver and a pedestrian. Unfortunately, that pedestrian was pronounced dead on the scene. Again, this happened just before midnight and De Leon Valley's police say the woman driving a small SUV was headed northbound on Wurzbach and lost control of the vehicle. Video shows the tire marks left after that vehicle jumped onto the sidewalk towards the parking lot of that Wells Fargo in the area. Police say the driver slammed into the pedestrian on the sidewalk and later crashed into a tree, knocking it down. At this hour, not much is known about the victim. Again, we do know that victim was pronounced dead on the scene. That victim described as a male. And police did say that that driver remained on the scene, but they will be facing charges. So we know an arrest was made. In the next half hour on GMSA, what police suspect of that driver? Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, new this morning, police are looking for a man who, was, who stabbed someone along the river walk. Police say it happened around 1230 this morning. They say a couple was walking along the river when a man ran up and stabbed the woman in the arm. The two men got into a fight, but the suspect was able to run away. The woman was taken to Bamsey and she's expected to recover. A man behind bars after a major, major drug bust in Bear County. Deputies finding more than $26,000 worth of drugs, along with thousands of dollars in cash, all in one home on the west side. 35-year-old Jason Avalette now in custody, facing a first-degree felony charge. The search of the home happened just last week, and when they searched it, they found 266 grams of heroin, a handgun, plastic bags, a digital scale, and $3,500 in cash. A suspect facing charges of possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance. A man could be facing multiple charges after allegedly threatening two men and injuring a police officer. This happened around 5 o'clock yesterday evening at Westfield and West Military Drive. Police were called to the scene of the suspect reportedly making terroristic threats to two men in a food truck. Police say the suspect resisted arrest. They tried to tase him twice with no success, and an officer's wrist was broken during the struggle. Officers eventually got him into custody. 
Local health officials now reporting 100 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. One more person dying because of COVID. Mayor Ron Nuremberg saying the seven day moving average now sits at 162 cases a day. Meanwhile, the mayor telling us that hospitalizations slowly and slightly rising 228 people in the hospital, 85 of them in the ICU, 30 of them on ventilators. We expect to get another update from the mayor and Metro Health this evening in the daily briefing. Well, the St. Anthony Daycare Learning Center is closing its doors after 52 years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. There was a farewell parade yesterday. St. Anthony's is a faith based center where kids continue school through activities and provides daycare services to families. The event coordinator, who is also a former student, says losing the center is like losing a family member. And really just kind of um, share my gratitude. I can only speak for myself, but it's amazing to see um, everybody else come in with the same feelings and emotions that I am um, for, for the center because that's how special they are to us. Organizers say around 75 families old and new gave their final goodbye to the center. South Texas Blood and Tissue Center continuing to ask you for blood and plasma donations. The center says they are struggling to meet the needs. 40% of donors who sign up do not show up to their own appointments. On your screen, you can see how much inventory there is of each blood type. O positive, B positive, and O negative are the biggest needs right now. All this according to the center. The goal, though, is to have three days worth of blood available. To make an appointment to donate, just head to southtexasblood.org. CNN is reporting that a San Antonio teacher was fired for wearing a Black Lives Matter face mask. The report says art teacher Lillian White was fired earlier this month from Great Hearts Western Hills. That's on the far west side. White told CNN she wore the mask to demonstrate her support for black students and faculty and to also advocate for an anti-racism action plan and a more diverse curriculum. The school policy does not allow faculty to display messages on their face masks. However, no students or parents saw White wear the mask in person, but she told CNN she did receive some backlash from parents who saw photos of her wearing the mask on social media. Now heading to Travis County, Austin public health officials reporting that 31 pools of mosquitoes have tested positive for West Nile virus in Travis County. They're also reporting three probable cases of the virus in humans right now on KSAT.com. You can see which zip codes in Travis County have the infected mosquitoes. You can also learn some ways to protect yourselves from the bugs while you're at home. Time now, 6.07, 77 degrees out. It's okay. Armored. I was going to say one way to avoid the mosquitoes, staying inside and watch college football. All right, well, around the country, people are mourning the loss of former Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Now opera singers are putting together special tributes. We have the sights and sounds next. First, take a look outside with live cam. 77 degrees, 608 this morning. A, br a bit breezy or windy out there this morning. What will your Sunday afternoon day look like? Sarah Spidey will let us know when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. Since Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has passed away, people have been mourning her loss around the country. Yesterday, a Washington, D.C. opera company used song to honor the life of the late Justice CNN. Photojournalist Andrew Christman takes us there. We're in series. We're a D.C. opera company. We mix opera, theater, and social justice. And we know that music was Justice Ginsburg's release, her escape, so we thought it was the one gift we could offer her now. RBG meant so much as a woman growing up in the 20th and 21st century. Her persistent fight for women to have an equal say in important decisions. She was an avid opera fan. For me, opera and music, it brings hope to people's hearts, it inspires people, and that is exactly what we were trying to do here today. My grandfather, he loved opera. I called it, he was a doctor, he was the only doctor in uh, the town that he was in. Mm -hmm. and he, my name for him, not grandpa, it was um, Daddy Doc. Mm. <laughs> Daddy Doc. <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> you were trained in opera. Briefly, briefly, okay. briefly. Do you want to I'm give us a sample? I'm not even going to. 
No. <laughs> Not on TV. I'll give you guys a sample later. Off camera, she definitely will. Okay, well, I am trained in the weather in meteorology, so let's go ahead and take a look outside uh, right now with live cam. It is 77 degrees out there. It is cloudy and it's breezy too. Winds are from the south at about 15 miles per hour. Humidity at 84% and we will have some gusts later on today that could be up to about 25 miles per hour. Uh, but for now, no significant wind gusts to report. 77 at the airport in San Antonio, so it is just downright 72 at Bernie Sage Airfield. It's 74 in Bandera, 76 in Hondo at 79 in New Braunfels, still almost 80 degrees. This is a pretty warm start for the end of September and it's going to be a hot day for us. Thankfully, we have some clouds out there this morning that will regulate temperatures a little bit. If we didn't have these clouds out there, we may be talking triple digits in San Antonio, but thankfully we do have the uh, cloud cover, so we'll probably only top off right in the low 90s. But like I mentioned, the winds are from the south and southeast at about 15 miles per hour. That's tapping into that Gulf of Mexico moisture. That's why it feels very humid outside. And in the future cast, you can see another day very similar to yesterday where we had clouds all morning long, but then in the afternoon, the sun started poking out and that's gonna be the case today as well. And it's gonna be hot around San Antonio, 93 for the high temperature around San Antonio, 93 in Stone Oak, 93 Helotus, even 90s, of at Bernie and Leon Springs in the higher elevations, 94 in La Soya, 94 Elmendorf and 93 Lavernia for the high temperature. So just taking you through the rest of the day, still cloudy at 10, starting to see the sun at noon. That's when we'll get into the 80s and then we'll quickly jump into the low 90s. We'll have winds from the south at five, uh, 10 to 20 rather, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. And then temperature should dip down into the low 80s by midnight. Now after midnight, that's when we're going to see the front move through. Where is that front right now? Well, it's currently across the central plains. Uh, and as we look at the temperatures, it's not insanely cold behind this front, but temperatures in the 30s across Montana, Wyoming, uh, temperatures falling in Denver as we speak. So this is a real deal cold front, and it's going to make things very, very windy tomorrow. Let me take you through the future cast. That front will move through again between about 2 a.m. and 4 a.m., so before the sunrise. And then it'll get windy and it'll get windy really quickly showing you the future wind gusts here right when you wake up maybe a gust up to about 25 miles per hour but then behind that front we're going to see wind gusts of up to potentially 40 miles per hour during the day tomorrow it is going to be windy Thankfully, in the evening hours, those winds will start to die down. But just to put this in perspective for you, a severe wind gust is about 58 miles per hour. So we're going to be about 50 miles per hour gusts, a little bit less than that. But still, a wind gust of 40 miles per hour is a real deal thing. You might want to bring in any very light patio furniture or things like that uh, for tomorrow's wind gusts. And as far as temperatures, this is what it looks like. So we'll dip down into the 60s in the early morning behind that front, and then it'll stay cloudy for some part of the morning, but quickly clear by the afternoon. We'll have plenty of sunshine and a high temperature near 78 degrees. So a big drop in temperatures today. We're going to be at 93. Tomorrow we'll be at 78 and then by Tuesday morning, by about seven o'clock in the morning, we'll be waking up in the low 50s. So it'll feel great, especially in the morning hours in the week ahead. And the good news is, too, is that with that front moving through, it's going to take out all of the humidity. So even though we see temperatures rebound into the 80s for most of the week, we'll have low humidity and a nice breeze. So it'll feel great outside all throughout the day. If you're a runner, if you like to run, I don't know about you, but mornings in the 50s, that sounds pretty great to me for that quick morning mile. Hmm. You had me at 50s. You lost me at running. <laughs> Not even a mile, Max? Oh, come oh. on, Max. Mister, I work out every... every yeah, there's a difference between working out. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't sound like Don't opera to me. Don't get me wrong. Me. He, he is... He, he's dedicated. Time now is 617, 77 degrees out. Well, working from home is not always easy. After the break, we will find some ways to make it better. All right, time to take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, two, nine, fireball three, daily four, four, seven, zero, five, fireball three. Cash five, four, 16, 18, 28, 30. Here's that Texas lotto jackpot, six, 11, 13, 22, 29, 32. And Powerball, 11, 21, 27, 36, 62, Powerball 24, Power Play 3.
Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. Working from home is ideal for some people, but for others, might not be that easy. There's distractions, it can be lonely and difficult to separate work life from home life. As Stephanie Cerna explains, if you don't like working from home, there are a few ways to make it a little better. It's no secret that remote learning isn't as efficient as in-person classes. But according to a study at the University of Bristol, researchers are finding out that teens are less stressed and anxious. The researchers studied more than 1,000 teenagers and found 54% of 13 to 14-year-old girls were at risk of anxiety prior to the pandemic. They say that dropped by 10% during quarantine. For boys of that age, it dropped from 26% to 18 percent. Researchers say many students also reported feeling a greater connection to their schools with increased opportunities to talk with their teachers. Emily Widnall, the lead author of the study, says students might have felt less anxious about exams, peer relationships, and bullying. Experts say if your kids are feeling anxious about school, it's important to offer them reassurance and make sure to keep an eye out for signs of anxiety. Stephanie Serna, KSET 12 News. You love working from home. I, I loved it. I hate I, it. I loved it. I detest it. it. I need social interactions. I need people. I need structure. I need something. <laughs> All right, 622, 77 degrees out. After the break. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is time to talk sports. A crazy day for college football. We had the whole card lined up, and it was even crazier in the game between Texas and Texas Tech. Longhorn fans, take a deep breath. We know you need it. Lots of action, but let's fast forward to the fourth quarter. Tech leading 56. Yeah, 56 to 41. Three minutes left. Longhorns not going away. Marching down the field, get within eight points. They needed some luck. They got it on an onside kick. They got the ball bouncing into it. Right off of Red Raiders' hands, Texas taking advantage, scoring just a couple plays later, converting the two-pointer, tied at 56, going to overtime. The Longhorns score first. Sam Ellinger had a night, really jumping up on top of those Heisman boards. On top of my Heisman board. Sixth touchdown of the game. Goes to Tech to respond. It is an intercept by Caden Stearns, the former Steel Knight, having the final say. Whew, we just like to sit here and watch some, you know, Ellinger highlights. Ellinger just slinging it. Anyway, the Longhorns survive, win the highest scoring game between these two programs in history, 63 to 56. Yeah, this is football, not basketball. Pro football coverage. And Powered talking about football, we got to talk about pro football. Both the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Texans, they are in action today. The Cowboys coming off that crazy come from behind win over the Falcons, taking on the Seahawks. Different kind of hawk today. 325 in the afternoon in Seattle and the Texans looking to bounce back after starting 0-2 playing against the former two MVPs. They are taking on Big Ben and the Steelers in Pittsburgh. That's at noon. And we got one football. We might as well talk about the other one. In soccer, San Antonio FC played their second and last game of the regular season last night on the road in Tulsa. 16th minute, Tulsa on the attack. Matt Cardoni extends for the huge save. Check out the replay. Wait for it. Wait for it. Fully extended, outstretched, hit that one away, but Tulsa gets a goal in stoppage time, winning it big, 1-0. San Antonio remains the top seed in the West, though. That's the important part. And talking about the West, Manu Ginobili giving credit where credit is due, saying, quote, LeBron, 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 we take him for granted so often. We really do. I'm not even a LeBron big fan. But as you can imagine, LeBron and the Los Angeles Lakers heading to the NBA Finals. It's official. LeBron James leading the team, leading the Lakers to a 117-107 to win over the Denver Nuggets. The tenth time that LeBron James will play in the Finals, the third most by a player all time, the Lakers could find out who they play tonight. The Miami Heat, the Boston Celtics, they're taking over tonight. Eastern Conference Finals, if Miami wins, they will meet the Lakers to play for that title. Remember, LeBron played for the Heat, brought two titles to South Beach. And the other winter sport, hockey. Dallas Stars still alive in the Stanley Cup playoffs after beating the Tampa Bay Lightning last night, 3-2, but didn't come easy. The Stars won in double overtime, jamming in the last second goal. Dallas... They can't lose from here on out, though. Lightning still have that 3-2 lead. They do play again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Going back to basketball for a second, though. Saw a crazy stat this morning. LeBron James has played in 13.5% of all NBA Finals. Only two. Whoops. 
in that. At you know, I usually save them for high school highlights. <laughs> I give credit where credit is due, like Manu Ginobili. Okay. I'm like the Manu of the newsroom, who's to say? 629, 77 degrees out. <laughs> All right. Well, students, school faculty, and families clearly have unique obstacles in the learning process this year. We know there are a lot of moving parts and a lot of questions. That's why today on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Dr. Roland Rios, the Director of Technology at Fort Sam Houston ISD, joins us live to talk about what students are going through, what's next, and what long-term changes we can expect in schools. And in our next half hour of GMSA, we're going to learn more about President Donald Trump's nominee to the Supreme Court. All that and more coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday, 633 this morning. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. And if you've walked outside at all, it's like... Your hair might be flying all over the place. It's a bit breezy out there. It is a bit breezy and it's humid. So altogether a bad hair day, right, Sarah? Yes. All right, 77 degrees outside. It is cloudy and we are seeing a wind from the south at about 15 miles per hour. Uh, but we have seen gusts already of up to 25 miles per hour. It's humid. Dew points are in the 70s. That's a summertime dew point and we do see dew points in the 70s in September, uh, but toward the end of the September, it becomes a little bit more rare. Uh, today, we are going to be hot and humid. Now, we are cloudy right now. Those clouds are eventually going to dissipate in the afternoon. The first half of the day is going to be cloudy. Second half of the day, a little bit of sunshine. High temperature near 93 degrees. So, like I said, it's going to be a hot day, but it won't stay that way for long. In your weather headlines, like I mentioned, a toasty Sunday, but you're seeing that right. There is a cold front. That will be arriving tomorrow morning It'll allow for a temperature drop, making it feel like fall and it will create very windy conditions tomorrow. Not only will you notice the cool, but you will more than likely notice how gusty it'll be. I'll be back to tell you just how gusty it'll be in your neighborhood and whether or not you should bring in that patio furniture because of those wind gusts coming up next. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, police say a man is in custody after a crash on the west side. So take a look. This was the scene around 240 this morning at Ridge Path and Ridge Brook. Police on the scene telling us a driver was speeding, lost control of his pickup truck, crashed into that large boulder that it's right on top of in the front yard of a home. That driver then arrested under suspicion of alcohol. Luckily, though, no injuries reported. Well, police are looking for a driver who crashed a car with his family inside after a road rage incident. They say it happened around 320 this morning on Loop 410 near Highway 151. Police say the road rage led to the man driving his car off an embankment on 410. They say an off-duty police officer tried to help, but he and the driver got into a fight when the driver tried to run off. The driver eventually got away and a woman and two kids in the car were taken to University Hospital all three only suffered minor injuries, and police are still looking for the driver. San Antonio mother is using the pain she has after losing a son to gun violence to now raise awareness about the need for more resources for troubled teens in our area. Carol Falcon is the mother of 17-year-old Darnilio Garza, a teen who was shot and killed during an ambush back in July. She tells us her son experienced a downward spiral after his father died from gun violence just eight years prior. She says she now wants justice and she wants more support groups for families with troubled teens facing mental health issues. Resources, it would be something involved for especially young guys instead of them being in the streets or they're fatherless, you know, I believe they, you know, there should be something out here in San Antonio so we can get these kids involved and get them off the street. The suspect responsible for her son's death is still at large and police right now don't have a description of who's responsible. Family and police urging anyone with any information that can help investigators to call the homicide unit. That number on your screen 210-207-7635. Well, now to the battle over the Supreme Court. As we inch closer to Election Day, President Donald Trump making his pick to the Supreme Court, Justice Amy Coney Barrett. And now the political battle is underway. ABC's Christine Sloan with reaction from lawmakers and when hearings are expected to start. Just hours after nominating federal judge Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court, President Trump touting his pick before a packed crowd in Pennsylvania. Judge Barrett is a brilliant legal mind, an extraordinary scholar, you know that. 
number one in her class. You know, the, uh, the professor, one of the most respected people, he said the greatest student he's ever had. That's pretty good. If confirmed, the 48-year-old would fill the seat of the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who died earlier this month amid a bitter election battle. During Saturday's Rose Garden ceremony, Judge Barrett, a devout Catholic who is anti-abortion and pro-Second Amendment, vowing to adhere to the Constitution. Judges are not policymakers, and they must be resolute in setting aside any policy views they might hold. A former law clerk to Justice Antonin Scalia, she's the president's third pick to the nation's highest court. Democrats are united in opposing her candidacy. A vote for Amy Coney Barrett is a dagger aimed at the heart of the health care protections Americans so desperately need and want. Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden also urging the Senate to not act until after the election. Sources tell ABC Senate hearings are expected to begin October 12th. And if confirmed, Judge Barrett could be on the court by Election Day. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Well, Governor Greg Abbott released a statement showing his support for Amy Coney Barrett's nomination. In a statement, he said in part, quote, her proven legal brilliance is matched by her exceptional character and unflinching commitment to the U.S. Constitution. The Senate should swiftly confirm Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the United States Supreme Court. And in your election headlines, Texans, as of right now, will be able to vote straight ticket this November. A federal judge blocking the Lone Star State from eliminating the straight ticket voting. Now, Governor Greg Abbott signed a bill to eliminate the process this year, but state Democrats took it to court. Democrats pointed to longer lines on Super Tuesday and says that the move disproportionately affects black and Hispanic voters. A judge said that Texas should not make voting a longer process during this pandemic. A county commissioner in East Texas and three others have been indicted on charges of vote harvesting in 2018. The Texas Attorney General says the members of Gregg County Commissioner Shannon Brown's Democratic campaign fraudulently solicited mail-in votes from able-bodied voters by claiming they were disabled. Under Texas election law, mail ballots based on disability are specifically reserved for those who are physically ill and cannot vote in person. And heading to the East Coast, President Donald Trump's campaign team is suing to block mail-in ballot rule changes in North Carolina. The North Carolina Board of Elections says it will contact a voter to fix minor issues instead of issuing a brand new ballot. They report the three most common mistakes leading to ballot rejections are omitted signatures, lack of a witness signature, or blank address lines. The lawsuit claims it undermines the integrity of this election. The first presidential debate is taking place this week. President Trump and Joe Biden will go head to head this Tuesday in Cleveland, Ohio. The debate is scheduled at eight in the evening and Fox News anchor Chris Wallace will moderate. Topics include the candidates records, the Supreme Court, the pandemic and the economy. And your time now, 640, 77 degrees out. Environmental issues have turned into heated debates over the years, but we will learn about a new documentary that says the issue should just be, quote, common sense. Hey, let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. 77 degrees out there right now. We've seen it is breezy this morning, but what is the rest of the day? What does your week look like? We're going to be joined by our own Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. Whew, we got the double box right off the top. All right, Hi. 77 degrees out there. Sarah, how's it look? Well, it's cloudy and it's windy. So we've got, go. we've got that going for us this morning, but in the afternoon we will see sun. Uh, however, tomorrow it'll be even windier. Winds are going to gust up to 40 miles per hour in some places, potentially even more than that. We've got a lot to talk about in the forecast, including a cold front on the way. But for now, let's just take a look outside. 77 degrees south wind at about 15 miles per hour. Humidity is at 84%. Uh, so it's noticeably humid outside uh, and you step out there and that's going to be a major factor for our afternoon temperatures as well. We will have a heat index value today and it's already going to be hot with a high temperature temperature in the 90s. Reason for the humidity right now is a good southeasterly breeze that's going to pick up that Gulf of Mexico moisture and swing it our way. And that's why we've been seeing a steady stream of uh, increase in the humidity. Now, that being said, it's humid at the surface, 
but it is very dry in the upper levels of the atmosphere right now. And that's why we're not expecting other than a few sprinkles, maybe overnight, any rain from the upcoming front. And that's because, again, it's dry upstairs in the atmosphere, even though it's humid uh, here at the surface. 75 right now to start off the day in Del Rio, 79 in New Braunfels, almost at 80 degrees to start off your Sunday. 74 in Kennedy, 78 in Pleasanton, 79 in Catula, and 76 in Hondo. Showing you the future cast, it's cloudy right now, a lot like yesterday. You remember how we started off with complete cloud cover? It was cloudy all morning long, but then in the afternoon we saw sun. That that's going to be the case again today and boy is it going to be hot as soon as we see that sunshine take a look at some of these temperatures these future cast high temperatures could be up to 100 degrees out west toward Carrizo Springs Eagle Pass and potentially even Del Rio uh, because we have high humidity here in San Antonio our temperatures should be in the low 90s but still a heat index value up to about 95 to 98 degrees this afternoon so it is going to be hot but the seasons are going to change on us in 24 hours because of a cold front that will arrive late tonight into the overnight hours. Uh, so here's your Sunday's forecast. Cloudy uh, in the morning, clearing skies afternoon, 93 for the high. Wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour today, so we will have a bit of a breeze. And then in the evening, we'll still have mostly clear skies and temperatures falling to near 80 degrees. Now. Again, like I said, that front is on its way. Currently, it's across the central plains. And, you know, temperatures are not too much colder behind this front, but it is noticeably cold up in Montana and in Wyoming. Denver seeing temperatures fall as well, and this cold air is potent and it'll make it to San Antonio. Showing you the future cast now, that front will arrive between about the hours of 2 a.m. and 4 a.m., and then it'll quickly become windy behind that front. Just how windy? I'm showing you the future cast wind gusts here. We could see wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour around San Antonio. Even some of the future cast models showing wind gusts up to about 50 miles per hour up in the hill country. So it's going to be very windy. If you have a light patio furniture, or perhaps you have left your garbage can outside, I would bring it in because these wind gusts will send things flying. Uh, again, wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour is no joke. Now those winds from the north are going to usher in that cooler air. And so by uh, mon Tuesday morning, rather, we'll have temperatures in the 40s in the hill country and 50s around San Antonio. Just how uh, cool will it get in the afternoons? Well, it won't be cool. We'll be seeing temperatures rebound back into the 80s for the remainder of the week. But the key here is low humidity and the mornings will be cool, borderline even chilly, at least according to my standards. Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, morning lows uh, in the low to mid 50s, and then we'll continue to see really pleasant, crisp mornings through next weekend as well. Uh, so all in all, a really nice forecast. Again, that front will move through, drop temperatures into the 60s, will gradually clear tomorrow and see temperatures rebound into the 70s. But boy, will it be windy with those wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour. Thankfully, winds start to die down after Tuesday. 40 miles an hour. I know. I'm thinking, like, is it going to destroy my flowers? I have I some. Not at 40, but you, you know, some. If you get a wind gust up to 50 plus, then then you're talking maybe. An Whoa. Issue. I'd be really upset if my flowers. For those of you who don't know, Sarah Costa, master gardener. Time now, 649, 77 degrees out. Well, to honor National Public Lands Day, a new documentary is highlighting conservation efforts in the U.S. We will get a deeper look at an ode to the environment after the break. Welcome back. Well, 28% of the United States is public land managed by Forest Service, the National Park Service, and other federal agencies. It's all this, also the subject of numerous controversies, some of which are now being explored in a new documentary, now streaming on YouTube in honor of National Public Lands Day. CNN's David Daniel has a look. 640 million acres, some of the most beautiful and awe-inspiring land left on planet Earth. And you own it. There's an enormous, well-heeled movement to take lands away from the American people. To make vast sums of money for somebody and change our country forever. Public Trust features journalist and lifelong outdoorsman Hal Herring, who says often the issue isn't extraction versus conservation, but common sense regulation. It's about people who want something for nothing. 
And that's just not acceptable when it's somebody else's property or it's all of our property. The film focuses on three regions, Minnesota's Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. If the case can't be made to protect this place, how can you expect to protect anything? Bears Ears National Monument in Utah. Representatives of Utah have taken upon themselves to declare war upon us, the Native American tribes. I'd drill in a cemetery if there was oil there. And the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, part of the Gwich'in people's sacred land. The migration route of the porcupine caribou herd and the Gwich'in communities, if you look at them, the map, they're identical. Our ancestors migrated alongside the caribou for over 40,000 years. The proposed Anwar oil drilling site includes the caribou calving grounds. Bernadette Dementif says drilling would alter the caribou migration and the Gwich'in's identity. We're simply asking to continue to live and thrive off the land that Creator blessed us with. For Herring, it's about patriotism. It's part of the American experiment in balancing liber individual liberty and the common good. Is my little grandson going to know what wilderness is in a hundred? You know, is he going to be able to see what wilderness is in his lifetime? Is it going to be over? We're taking a stand and we're taking back our home. So, ready for the fight because we're not going to give up. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time now, 6.54, 77 degrees out. Take a look outside with live cam, 77 degrees. It's bumped up a little bit. It is breezy out there, like our Sarah Spivey was saying. What will your Sunday forecast look like? And we're expecting a cool front in just a day or two. Sarah will let us know about that when we come back. We're live from the city's far east side, bringing you the latest on a deadly accident. This happened um, around an hour, 30 minutes ago. We're on the 5700 block of North Foster Road, close to the intersection with Seguin. And what we see here is a black vehicle um, the, the front of that completely smashed in a lot of damage. The tire even popping out, that front tire of that vehicle. Then here we see, we know that hazmat crews are on the way. You can actually see some of the absorbent on the floor, on the ground there. And then to our left over here, this vehicle, um, this accident does involve a VIA bus. A lot of damage to the front of that VIA bus, number 507. It is confirmed that this is a deadly accident, but at this time we are waiting to receive more information from San Antonio police. They remain here at the scene, and we know this block of the 5700 block of North Foster Road continues to be blocked off. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. And the news you need to know before you go, police are looking for a man who stabbed someone along the Riverwalk. Police say it happened around 1230 this morning. They say a couple was walking along the river when a man ran up and stabbed the woman in the arm. The two men got into a fight, but the suspect was able to get away. The woman was taken to Bamsey. She's expected to recover. Police ex also expected to be searching for a driver throughout the day. The man suspected of crashing his vehicle with his family inside after a road rage incident. They say all of this happened around 3.20 this morning on Loop 410 near Highway 151. Police say the road rage led the man to driving his car off the embankment of 410. They say an off-duty police officer tried to help out, but he and the driver actually got into an altercation. The driver tried to run off, eventually got away, and a woman and two kids in the car taken to University Hospital, all three suffering minor injuries. Police still looking for the driver. And it'll be hot today, 93, but that front arrives tomorrow morning, making it windy. Gusts up to 40 miles per hour tomorrow and mornings in the 50s this week. Thanks, Cold Front. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll be back here 8 o'clock. Live from KSA 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. On the city's far east side early this morning, a head on collision involving a via bus leaves one man dead. We have the latest from police at the scene here on JMSA. School has never looked so different and because of this pandemic, we could see long term effects coming up on leading SA. Dr. Roland Rios, director of technology for Fort Sam Houston ISD, joins us live to talk about the current situation and what's next. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, we have some raindrops on the camera. 77 degrees to start your morning. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. It is 8 a.m. this Sunday, September 27th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. I love 
seeing those raindrops out mm -hmm. there because it's like, oh, cozy, <laughs> sleep in, stay in bed Sunday morning. But Sarah, I don't, you're saying it's really not. No, those deal. are those are more like sprinkle drops. Mm. <laughs> and that camera happens to be in one of the places that are getting uh, some sprinkles. You know, we have low clouds out there and sometimes low clouds will create sprinkles briefly. And that's the case for the area that this live cam is in. I want to show you that uh, and show you the current conditions at the San Antonio International Airport. It is 77 degrees. Notice that little sprinkle drop in the middle shaking, wobbling. The reason for that is it's windy too. South winds at about 18 miles per hour with gusts up to 25 out there. Uh, so we are seeing some breezy conditions uh, and for today, though, only half of our day will be cloudy. A lot like yesterday, we are going to be seeing uh, temperatures rebounding. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, Skies clearing afternoon, 93 degrees for the high temperature. South winds at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. So it is going to be breezy uh, and toasty this afternoon. Again, 90s for the afternoon high temperature, even though we're dealing with some morning clouds. But tomorrow morning, before dawn, a front is going to move through, and that's going to help to drop our temperatures and bring a very windy Monday. I'll be back with a look at how windy it's going to get in your neighborhood and around San Antonio. Wind gusts are going to be pretty up there, and we'll also talk about how cool it'll be behind that front. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Happening right now in Far East San Antonio, police investigating a deadly crash that involves a via bus. Police are at the 5700 block on North Foster Road near Seguin Road, where traffic is being rerouted as the scene is very active. Alicia Barrera live from that location with the latest. Alicia, do we know anything about the victim? Yeah, we know that victim is the driver of the black vehicle and I'll move out of your way so you can actually get a better look. Unfortunately, that victim of the that was driving that black car there was pronounced dead here at the scene. Police say that driver veered onto oncoming traffic and hit the via bus early this morning around 6 a.m. So here at the scene, um, we spoke to Sergeant Mario Martinez. He says the driver of the black vehicle was headed southbound on Foster Road and witnesses told police they actually saw that driver veer onto the northbound lanes. The via bus driver saw that car and tried to avoid an accident, so he veered right, jumping onto the sidewalk. The black vehicle collided head on with the via bus. We know that um, several people were inside the via bus. Uh, police say about two or three. And in addition, of course, the driver of the via bus, they are all OK. Of course, that's not the case for the driver of this black vehicle here. We can see the front of the car completely destroyed, even that front tire popping off. And we know there was some uh, leakage of fuels from both that via bus and the black vehicle. So Hazmat was here. They have some absorbent on the ground now. Uh, we have reached out to VIA for comment, but as of now, our calls have not been um, returned. But again, we police were able to confirm here on the scene that the driver of that VIA bus is OK. Those passengers are OK, uh, not physically hurt, but of course, very shaken up because it was a head on collision. And you saw some of the damage on that VIA bus. And as for the victim, we don't have his name. We just know that he's a male. Um, uh, um, in his late 20s and we know that his family is here and we've seen him react and of course it's very tough for them as they're just finding out um, of the sudden passing of their loved one. We're going to stay here live on the scene. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lisa. Other top stories we're following this morning. A man is dead after being hit by a vehicle on the northwest side. Police investigating the situation that unfolded just before midnight in the 5000 block of Warsbach Road. That's close to the San Antonio Aquarium. Leon Valley Police telling us a woman was driving north on Warsbach. She lost control of her vehicle, causing it to jump onto the sidewalk, crashing into that pedestrian. The vehicle then slammed into a tree and into the parking lot of the Wells Fargo. The man, the pedestrian, was pronounced dead on the scene. Officers say that woman was arrested under suspicion of alcohol. Now she's facing a charge of intoxication manslaughter. Well, police are looking for a man who stabbed a woman along the river walk. It happened just after midnight in the 1500 block of North River Walk. Police telling us a couple was walking down on the river walk when a man walked up to them and stabbed the woman in the arm. Officers say the two men got into a fight, but the suspect ended up running away. The woman was then taken to BAM scene is expected to be okay.
Well, some students in and around San Antonio are slowly returning to in-class learning. Districts in our area are handling this unprecedented situation in different ways. But this pandemic is obviously unpredictable, and it could have lasting effects on students, the learning process, and the teaching process. In today's Leading Essay segment, Dir Director of Technology for Fort Sam Houston ISD, Dr. Roland Rios joins us. Good morning, Dr. Rios. Good morning, Sarah and Max. How are y'all doing? Doing well. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Right off the bat, what are some of the unique challenges for your district? You know, in our district, we've got a very unique challenge because we're at Fort Sam Houston, all of our students are military dependents. So not only are they dealing with this odd pandemic, many of them are brand new to our city. Uh, they've moved here over the summer. They haven't had a chance to experience San Antonio and all, all its glory with everything closed. They're brand new to our school and haven't even stepped foot in our building. Uh, add to that the mix of online learning with, with in-person instruction. Uh, we've got quite a challenge facing us right now. And you just touched on it just a bit. How have your students and faculty been doing since we'll start it back up? And how are you doing to integrate in class learning with virtual learning? Great question, Sarah. That's, that's a really difficult thing for us. We've never experienced anything like this, nor were we prepared for it. But I tell you what, educators in our district, all over the city, all over the country, they've really risen to the occasion. It's difficult to teach completely online. They had to learn that in the spring as we were closed completely for the pandemic. Now that we've got a mixture of both in-person instruction and hybrid and, and online learning, they're having to find ways to be able to teach to both audiences without killing themselves by doing extra duty uh, and making sure that everyone is receiving that high quality engaging curriculum that we really want all of our students to do. And of course, much of that is done through the use of technology. These are obviously unprecedented times, unpredictable times, a lot of new changes with Zoom and all the virtual learning. Do you foresee long-term education effects as a result of say the past six months? Yeah, I, I really do, Max, and I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, I think once all of this COVID is over, and we know it will be one day, and we have those children and their beautiful smiling faces back with us face to face, I think teachers, uh, administrators, students, parents, they're going to realize that education isn't necessarily bound by the four walls of a building. We can use things like Zoom and Google Meet to reach out and pull in outside experts and reach kids that may not be able to be there physically. And while we may return to what we call a traditional setting, I think the things that we've learned in the use of technology and being able to reach out, they're gonna have lasting effects. And we're gonna start to see that learning doesn't have to take place from eight to four, doesn't have to take place in the building. And I'm excited about the lessons our teachers, students, and parents are gonna learn through all this. And Dr. Rios, what has the pandemic revealed in terms of a digital divide in our community? Well, unfortunately, Sarah, there does exist a, a bit of a digital divide as far as access to technology. Uh, we were blessed. We were already a one-to-one -one Chromebook school district, so all of our students had access to devices. Uh, but in addition to access to devices, uh, that digital divide there, there also needs to be equity in what I call equity and experience. Not only equity and access, but just because this school has one-to-one -one devices and that one, what are the kids doing with those devices? Are they simply using them as a substitute for pen and paper? Are they really delving deep and letting that technology truly transform education? And that's what we in the educational technology departments want to do, is teach teachers and students how to use technology to take them to places that have never been before. And last question before we let you go, what does that learning curve look like to inform these teachers and the students how to use technology for good? We are trying to hit our teachers every which way we can, Max. Uh, we've developed a website for our teachers called Teach Anywhere. We've got a, a website for our students called Learn Anywhere. We are constantly reaching out to our teachers within our uh, district on how to use technology. We're producing tutorial videos, uh, handouts, anything that we can to give them that just-in-time training to get that knowledge when they need it. Uh, we have been very, very busy in our department. It's been a fun busy and we're excited and we're very happy to help our teachers and students. All right, Dr. Reyes, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You keep up the good work in your district. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great day. Thank you too. All right, time now, 810, 77 degrees out. Well, people in Massachusetts welcomed fall with a fall. Have you ever seen a horse fly? Yes. We have this story <laughs> still ahead in today's. Take a look at this. And this is a crazy situation. I saw it on Instagram yesterday. Amazon elevating home security system, literally making it airborne. 
We're going to explain next. No. <laughs> you don't many. want a flying security guard? No, just too many cameras, <laughs> too many people watching. Well, it's 8, 10, 77 degrees. Our Sarah Spivey will explain some very far and few between sprinkles in our area and what your Sunday forecast looks like when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. What do you think about flying security cameras around your house? No. <laughs> Just flat out no. Well, no. your next home security system could be going airborne next year. Ring, which is the security business owned by Amazon, just released details about its home drone. Amazon revealed the Ring Always Home Cam during an online hardware event this week. It has a high definition camera and you can fly inside your home while streaming video to your smartphone when motion is detected or if the alarm system is triggered. Hmm. Users can also set up paths for the small drone. The drone costs $250. That actually isn't as much as I thought it was going to cost. You know, they're making computers smaller, cameras smaller. I got nothing. All right, you may have noticed a trend on social media lately with people revealing their newly customized home screens on their iPhones. That's all thanks to the latest Apple update. The update allows iPhone users to add widgets, change the appearances of their apps, and truly make their phone their very own. I updated my phone, still haven't done this. Oh, I've been, I don't update till the very last minute. <laughs> well, you can now match color schemes, add pleasing app icons, aesthetically pleasing app icons, and create an overall theme, but the process is not that simple. You can find all you need to know on how to get started on our website right now on ksat.com. Okay, so I don't have the new update, okay. but what I have done that people find interesting, but it was time consuming, is I have um, color coded, color coded my apps. Ooh. So they go from like red to orange to green. I'm like to trying blue. to, I'm not just on my phone on the news, I'm like trying to figure this out. I don't know how you do all this. Well, first you have to update it. No, no, it's updated. I, I don't miss the oh. updates. I'm not like Sarah waiting uh, 13 years. Yeah, I know. <laughs> then I have the new phone with no updates though. <laughs> so sometimes, you know how sometimes like if you you're trying to find the, you're app, trying to yeah. find the mm -hmm. app, I know there's a search bar too, but like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you know, oh, Safari is blue, then I just scroll to the blue. There you go. I feel neat? like younger kids are watching this being like, this is just a bunch of old people trying to figure out technology. I like Pretty how much. he said, I like how he said younger kids. Younger people. So he's Ooh. making himself <laughs> a kid. Oh. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look outside. I said earlier that there were some sprinkle drops, not raindrops on the camera. And you can still see those, but they're start starting to dry up there. And really, honestly, you may get some sprinkles uh, generally north of San Antonio this morning, uh, but it really, we're not going to see much rain over the next seven to 10 days. Uh, look at these drops, too. Every now and then you'll see them wiggle. And that's because it's windy. Winds are from the south at about 18 miles per hour, gusting up to 25 miles per hour at San Antonio International Airport. It's 77 degrees and it's cloudy. A lot like yesterday, we're going to have these clouds stick around up until about lunch or in the afternoon, and then those clouds will clear out and we will get hot today. High temperatures are going to be on the warm side. So even though it's in the 70s and it's muggy, uh, enjoy the cooler weather before we get the high temperatures this afternoon. 74 in Bandera, 75 in Tarpley, 75 in Hondo. Wake up temperature of 79 in New Braunfels, almost already 80 degrees out there. 77 in Del Rio, 76 in Uvalde, and 79 in Laredo. But again, I think the biggest thing you'll notice as you step outside is the humidity and the winds. Winds are uh, really breezy from the south at about 18 miles per hour at the airport. And so that's continuing to funnel in that high humidity. And that's why it's going to be hard for us to shake those morning clouds. But we will shake them. And you can see that in the future cast. And then as soon as we get a little bit of sun, we're going to see that thermometer rise. High temperatures today around San Antonio going to be right around the low 90s. 93 downtown San Antonio, 93 Stone Oak, 94 JBSA Randolph, 93 Seguin, 92 for the high in Leon Springs, and 95 in Castroville. So if you're planning out your Sunday, here's what you'll want to know. Cloudy until noon and then 90 degrees at 2, 93 around 4 p.m. And then uh, temperatures should cool off into the 80s by 10 o'clock and, and it will be breezy. South winds at 10 to 20 gusting up to 25 miles per hour. So we are seeing some colder air set up to the north. Temperatures are already dipping into the 30s in parts of Colorado and Wyoming and Montana. That's all ahead of the front, and that front is going to be moving through San Antonio overnight tonight. So we're talking 2 a.m., 
4 a.m. Uh, pre-dawn hours and then it's going to get very windy. Winds will be turning from the north. How windy will it be? Well, we could potentially see wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour tomorrow and that's enough to knock over light patio furniture or if you le left your garbage can outside, I may knock it over too. So if you don't want to be fishing for those things, you might want to bring them in. Those winds will subside with the sunset tomorrow, but still wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour possible behind that front. So what about temperatures? Well, this is a look at tomorrow. Again, that front will move through pre dawn and that'll drop temperatures down into the 60s to start the day with some cloud cover, but those clouds will gradually be clearing throughout the day so that will be mostly sunny by the afternoon. Our high temperature will only be in the 70s. And again, it's going to be windy winds from the north at 15 to 25 steady winds gusting up to 40 miles per hour and then with the clear skies in place, our temperatures are going to quickly plummet. We'll be in the uh, mid 50s, low to mid 50s by Tuesday morning. It'll still be breezy, a high temperature only of 81 degrees on Tuesday. And even though we get into the upper 80s briefly, just know that the low humidity is going to still feel great outside. So uh, it's a bit of a give and take. We've got complete sunshine, crisp, cool mornings and then uh, warmer afternoons. But again, with the low humidity, it should feel great outside. All right, wait. So should I get the car wash? Should I not get the car wash? What What do you mean, like Tuesday? Because you said yesterday. Why do you want? Do you want to get? A, you don't want to get rain on your car wash? No, no, no. Because you had a good point yesterday with the pollen. Yeah, all if, the wind. if the wind when the wind is picks up like that from the north this time of year, we can get some pollen on our vehicles. Mm. So maybe wash, wait until wash. Wednesday. That's fair. Oh. Jeep needs a wash. 820, 77 degrees out. Well, a film about a family of con artists who meet a stranger and pull her into their heist. We have a preview of the movie Kajillionaire. <laughs> Famous balancing boulder submits to gravity and a trapped horse flies. Yeah, there you go. We're going to have a complete look at all this in today's Take a Look at This. Welcome back. People in Massachusetts welcomed fall with a fall after a famous balancing boulder suddenly became a resting rock. CNN's Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Big rock, fall down, go boom. That's how a delicate balancing act that started thousands of years ago came to an end in Massachusetts. Up until late September, this massive boulder in Holliston had been teetering on top of another rock and for centuries had confounded locals, looky-loos, and even one famous founding father. Local legend has it the rock was visited by one George Washington in 1789. It was a leisurely trip and he's on the scenic road. He got off, apparently, got up here to try to push it off. Word of the fated fall quickly spread with some upset that the famous balancing boulder had now become just another resting rock. 2020 just keeps on giving gifts that nobody wants. As for what caused the monumental elemental shift? I think gravity won. Speaking of stuff going boom, the Royal Navy bomb squad sprang into action when a World War II era explosive was found on the shores of a British beach. Low tide revealed the ordnance, which officials determined to be a submarine mortar intact and possibly live. They cleared the beach, wired the mortar, and disabled it with a controlled explosion. Finally, prepare to see a horse take flight. Rescue officials airlifted the animal after she fell down a 60-foot California ravine. The horse, named Lola, reportedly began bucking before she slipped and fell. Walking her out was not an option due to terrain, so she was sedated and hoisted out. The operation was a success, and Lola was safely reunited with her owner after her high-flying wild ride. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Poor horsey. She was okay though, safely know, returned. But they get anxious too. Also, Sarah, you can tell everyone you were the one who pushed the rock over. <laughs> Time now is 826, 77 degrees out. Well, President Donald Trump picking federal appeals court judge Amy Coney Barrett to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg next on GMSA, how the nomination could affect the presidential race. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday, 8.30 this morning, September 27th. We hope everyone's cozy at home this Sunday morning. And Sarah, you were saying the weather's looking a little cozy right now, but it's going to probably warm up. Yeah, cozy because of the clouds, right? We all want to sleep in when it's cloudy outside. And the clouds are going to stick around through lunch, but then they're going to break up, and it's going to be a hot day today. High temperatures will climb into the 90s. I want to show you those clouds on the satellite imagery. This is looking at the clouds 
around San Antonio from space. Pretty cool there. Uh, you can see a blanket, a cloud cover. Uh, really around San Antonio. The reason why it starts off black is that's because before the sunrise happened and so you can really see anything. Those satellites couldn't see anything, but now we can see those clouds everywhere uh, and by the way, this is going to help to keep our temperatures uh, from soaring too quickly. Right now we're in the upper 70s. It's 77 degrees, 77 in Del Rio, 76 in Yavali, 77 in Carrizo Springs, 79 in Catula. There are even some sprinkles out there around San Antonio right now. Without this cloud cover, if we started off the day at 77 degrees without cloud cover, this afternoon we would have potentially reached 100 degrees, but because we've got the cloud cover, uh, we're only going to be in the low 90s today, which is pretty nice. It's breezy out there too. Winds are from the south, southeast at about 10 to 15 to even 18 miles per hour around uh, downtown San Antonio. And so for the day today, those clouds will stick around until about noon. That's when they'll break up and then it'll be 93 for the afternoon high. Breezy today, south winds at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. And then we fall into the 80s by about 10, but an even bigger temperature drop tomorrow, all because of a cold front that is currently working its way across the panhandle of Texas. It's now in the 50s in Lubbock. It was just in the 60s a little while ago, uh, and this front is going to bring us a big drop in temperatures and really kick up our winds. So I'll be back to tell you just how gusty it'll be around San Antonio and how cool it'll be in the mornings in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. One driver is dead after a head on collision with a VIA bus in the city's far east side. Police were called out to the 5700 block of North Foster Road near Seguin, near Old Seguin Road around 6 this morning. Alicia Barrera has been following this breaking news through the morning and has the latest from the scene. So Alicia, do we have any word on this via bus? Yes, we know it's involving bus via bus number 507, and we know that it was in service at the time of this accident. So who was on board? We know the driver of the via bus and police did confirm about two, maybe three passengers were inside. We know that they're OK. They didn't suffer any injuries. Um, obviously, the one that got the, the big brunt of this accident was the driver of that via bus. You can see the damage to that windshield in the front, um, but Unfortunately, this is a fatal accident. The driver of the black vehicle was pronounced dead on the scene. What we know is that the driver of this black vehicle here was headed uh, south on Foster Road and witnesses told police that they saw that vehicle veer onto the northbound lane, so onto oncoming traffic and the driver of that via bus actually tried to avoid the collision. So he did confirm that he did see that driver coming his way, jumped onto the curb, but unfortunately a collision could not be avoided. They hit that black car we know spun around and that's why we see it facing north here on Foster Road. Um, the family members are already on the scene and, um, you know, we've heard the mom cry out for her son. We know uh, the victim late 20s, uh, a male driver, but we don't have a name just yet. And on the scene here, investigations from both SAPD traffic are, go are underway as well as VIA. We know they have a team here on the scene assessing the situation. And if you're going to be headed around this way, if this is part of your morning commute, just know that on Foster Road uh, with Seguin Road, you're going to be uh, diverted. So you're probably going to have to go through the back of the HEB that's around, um, I believe it's Heritage Lake Road. So again, uh, we know this is going to be active for quite some time as police uh, take measurements and that body will be transported out of here. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Some top stories we are following this morning. Police say a man is in custody after crashing his pickup truck on the west side. This was the scene around 240 this morning at Ridge Path and Ridge Brook. Police telling us the driver was speeding, lost control of the truck and crashed into a large boulder in front in the front yard of a home. That driver was arrested on the suspicion of alcohol. Luckily, no one was injured. Police now searching for a man who crashed a vehicle with his family inside after a road rage incident on the city's west side. Take a look. All of this happening around 320 this morning on Loop 410 near Highway 151. Police telling us the road rage caused the man to lose control of his car, go down an embankment, landing below on Highway 151. 
Uh, they say an off-duty police officer tried to help out. He and the driver actually got into a fight. That's when the driver tried to run off. That driver eventually was able to get away. A woman and two children were inside that vehicle. They were taken to University Hospital, luckily with only minor injuries. Right now, police still searching for the man behind the wheel. Now to the latest COVID-19 numbers in Bear County. Metro Health reporting 100 new cases. That's down half from more than 200 new cases reported Friday. The total confirmed cases stand at 54,295. The seven-day moving average is 162 per day. There's one new death. Death toll sits at 1,074 people who have died from the virus. 228 people are in the hospital. That's up by three since last reported, and 85 are in the ICU, and 30 are in ventilators. In your morning head headlines, President Donald Trump delivering on his promise to reveal his Supreme Court nominee by the end of the week, pick, picking federal appeals court judge Amy Coney Barrett to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg. A confirmation battle still ahead in the final days of the presidential race, potentially making her nomination even more of a political battle than usual. ABC's Rachel Scott has the details. Overnight in Pennsylvania, President Trump taking the stage to chance to fill that seat. The words plastered across a giant monitor. We have Justice Gorsuch, Justice Kavanaugh, and now we have Amy, along with over 300 federal judges by the end of this term. Just Supreme hours after he Court announced his Justice. third Supreme Court nomination. 37 days out from Election Day, the president pressing forward, selecting Judge Amy Coney Barrett to fill the seat vacated by the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She is a woman of unparalleled achievement, towering intellect, sterling credentials, and unyielding loyalty to the Constitution. Barrett, a former clerk for Justice Antonin Scalia, could reshape the court for decades to come, pushing it further to the right. I clerked for Justice Scalia more than 20 years ago, but the lessons I learned still resonate. His judicial philosophy is mine too. A judge must apply the law as written. The devout Catholic has strong support among religious conservatives and anti-abortion activists, and she's already bracing for a tough fight ahead. I have no illusions that the road ahead of me will be easy, either for the short term or the long haul. Members of the United States Senate, I look forward to working with you during the confirmation process. Democrats were quick to oppose her nomination, even refusing to meet with Barrett before a confirmation hearing, calling the process illegitimate. A vote for Judge Barrett is a vote to take away health care and its protections for over 130 million Americans. The issue is whether her deeply held views can be set aside to enable her to be uh, objective and fair in making her decisions as a justice. The president's rival Joe Biden insisting the Senate should not act on this vacancy until after the American people select their next president and the next Congress. But Republicans have the majority and are in lockstep with the president. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell saying Trump could not have made a better decision, with the GOP vowing to start confirmation hearings on October 12th. And that was Rachel Scott reporting. Time now, 839, 77 degrees out. Well, Baby Yoda is accompanying first responders on the front lines of California. The wildfires, how he got there, we, still, we have those details still ahead on GMSA. And a new movie depicting a woman who joins a group of gifters, grifters, I guess those are like con men? Yeah. Oh. Either way, it's got a really cool name. Sarah? Kajillionaire. We have Boom. a preview. You, you say it with such emphasis. Kajillionaire. Not just billionaire. A millionaire. Or trillionaire. Kajillion. <laughs> Talk about outside. We won't see the tempest going in the kajillion digits today. Sarah Spivey will let us know about our forecast. Back. Most people want to be kajillionaires. That's the dream. That's how they get you hooked. Hooked on sugar, hooked on caffeine. Ha ha ha, cry, cry, cry. Me, I prefer to just skip. Los Angeles is the backdrop for the crime dramedy Kajillionaire. Well, it's about a family of con artists who meet uh, 
stranger and kind of pull her into their their heists and she ends up turning their world upside down. Gina Rodriguez plays the stranger who infiltrates the malfeasant family's world. Melanie kind of gets swept up by these three characters that are on a very different journey than herself. And she is in a space where she is ready for more and longing for connection and friendship and love and to be seen. And, you know, I think we all can understand that feeling. Oh, no. What? Oh. <laughs> I thought that I forgot my headphones. I don't often get opportunities like these because, you know, because it is different, because it is taking a risk. And it just is a testament to how incredible of a writer Miranda July is that she made us all so full, so nuanced, so complex that nobody was there just to, just to serve. They all served each other. They are real characters, super unique. But you vouch for them, right? In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. She learned to forge before she... All right, time now, 8.45. We saw a few sprinkles out there, but you say it's not going to be widespread. Yeah. Don't it, panic. Don't panic. <laughs> don't panic about the sprinkles. And even if you do get a sprinkle, that's all. It's going to be a sprinkle. We're not expecting any kind of uh, widespread rain of any kind. But right now it is cloudy, and these clouds are going to be stubborn and stick around. So uh, we do have to deal with those for at least the morning hours here. It's 77 degrees and cloudy south winds are breezy at 18 miles per hour with gusts up to 25 miles per hour, and that'll stick with us throughout the day as well, the windy conditions. Again, these clouds will break up after lunch, afternoon, uh, and then we'll be really hot with that afternoon sun shining through. Uh, Wind from the southeast at 13 miles per hour in Del Rio, from the south at 10 miles per hour in Kerrville. All of this is pulling in that Gulf of Mexico humidity. That's why you feel that icky, that stickiness out there uh, right now. Uh, and temperatures are reflecting that. Very warm for a start of a late September day. 79 in New Braunfels, almost 80 degrees already. 77 in Hondo, 77 in Del Rio, 79 in Carrizo Springs. Looking at the future cast, the clouds that I was talking about, you can see how they're going to break up into the afternoon and then it's just going to be hot. In fact, some areas out west, Del Rio, Yavaldi, Carrizo Springs, Eagle Pass going to be flirting with the triple digits today. Because we've had these morning clouds, our high temperature will only be limited into the low 90s. But because of the high humidity, it'll feel even hotter than that. Cloudy at 10, 81 degrees. Starting to see those skies clear at noon, 83, and then 93 for that high. Thank goodness we will have a breeze from the south at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25 miles per hour, and a pretty pleasant evening uh, tonight with temperatures falling into the 80s under mostly clear skies. But after midnight, we're going to see a front move through. This front is currently pushing through uh, the panhandle of Texas. You can see that temperatures have fallen into the 50s near Lubbock uh, and even in the 30s up across parts of the upper Rockies there, uh, Cup Bank, Montana at 37 degrees. Now we're not going to get into the 30s, but we are going to be seeing temperatures uh, fall uh, overnight and it'll become windy as soon as that front moves through. That front will move through between about 2 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the morning. Just how windy will it get? Well, this is a look at potential wind gusts tomorrow in the morning hours and into the early afternoon. Wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour in many places, maybe even more than 40 miles per hour. And that's enough to knock over light patio furniture and your garbage cans. So make sure to bring those in if you don't want to go out fishing for them later on in the day. All of that wind from the north is really going to pull in that colder air and it'll be nice and cool by the start of Tuesday. Tuesday morning, temperatures will be in the 40s in the hill country and the 50s around San Antonio. That's some good chilly fall like air, but we're going to clear out really quickly and so we'll be able to see temperatures warm up in the afternoon. Tomorrow our high temperature will be right around 77 degrees. That's a pretty significant drop from today and then in the week ahead temperatures should rebound into the 80s to upper 80s. But with low humidity, it's still going to feel good outside. The mornings is when it's really going to feel a very fall like uh, from Tuesday morning on temperatures should be in the 50s or near 60 degrees. Pretty chilly on Tuesday. If we reach 54, that'll be the coldest we've been in San Antonio officially in a very long time. Uh, so again, just looking at next week, it looks pretty awesome with temperatures in the 50s in the mornings, afternoons in the 80s. Very beautiful and sunny. Well, there you go, Sarah. Perfect for the garden. Well, I'm going to bring my plumeria in just in case. This I don't, little, I don't know what that it's, means. it's a little flowering 
tree. I'm not really up on the gardening game. So I gotta. I'll, I'll, I'll educate. Slowly by a pitch early. All right, 849, 77 degrees out. Well, high blood pressure can come from stress and other underlining health conditions. Tomorrow on GMSA, RJ Marquez gives us some tips to help you manage your high blood pressure. On the city's east side, far east side, one man is dead after colliding with a VIA bus. Police say the driver of a black vehicle was headed south on Foster Road when he veered onto oncoming traffic and hit head on with VIA bus number 507. We know that VIA bus was in service at the time of the collision. The driver of that VIA bus is OK. We know about two or three other passengers were inside. They're also OK. Unfortunately, that's not the case for the driver of the black vehicle. Vehicle. He was pronounced dead on the scene. We don't have his name, but we know he's a male driver in his late 20s. His family is on the scene and right now police say it's too early to determine exactly what led to him veering onto oncoming traffic. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, here is a light story to end our newscast with. Baby Yoda is accompanying first responders on the front lines of California wildfires. That's right. We all know that firefighters have been working almost 24 hour days trying to, you know, put out these wildfires and five year old Carver sent some of the firefighters a baby Yoda. Um, you know, baby attached to this care package was Baby Yoda and a note that read, thank you firefighters, here's a friend in case you get lonely during your, you know, when you're out there fighting. And so the firefighters have created a Facebook page called Baby Yoda Fights Fires mm -hmm. and they basically have been documenting <laughs> all of part. these journeys, <laughs> you know? It's so good and you get to see Baby Yoda's everywhere. He's even, I think that's a plane, right? Yeah, yeah, he's he, in the plane. I think it's a, in a helicopter. But yeah, he's everywhere. He's wearing an American bandana. He's everywhere. And, it, you know, it's just kind of like the good hearted nature of, you know, baby Yoda helping along the way, and but not yes. firefighters. KSAT.com reached out to five year old Carver and he said, quote, I have always wanted to help and uplift anyone that's around me. And this really was a bright spot in a dark time I wanted to share with everyone. Good news, that is. <laughs> oh, good news. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Yoda impression. That was Not good. Not that great. That was uh, good. That's a good story. I really love hearing that. And if some more good news, pollen count, everything looks good. Le mold is low and ragweed is low. They were both moderate yesterday. But I do think that with the front arriving tomorrow, we'll probably have an uptick in tree pollen at least uh, from those gusty winds. But for today, no front today. Just these morning clouds, afternoon sun, 93 for the high. It'll be breezy at times, gusts up to 25 miles per hour from the south. Then tomorrow's forecast, mm about opposite will be still windy, but even windier winds from the north at 15 to 25 gusting up to 40 miles per hour and our high temperature will only be in the 70s tomorrow because of that front. This is what I'm looking forward to waking up on Tuesday morning 54 degrees outside and then sunshine all week long next week. That looks like a good looking forecast to me uh, and uh, yeah, thankfully we won't have to deal with 90s. All right, Ugg we... boots and scarves. South <laughs> Texas. You'll be, you'll be taking ready. them off in the afternoon. Exactly. Be 80s. <laughs> Key is to layer. All right, we got 15 seconds left. What are you guys doing today? I am going to go over to a friend's house and socially distance, so that'll be nice. Ooh. Binge watch. Binge watch. No gardening? <laughs> no. Have a great rest of your Sunday.